Hi everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have Christina Pratt, who is an author, a healer, and a shamanic practice, and she has a shamanic practice at the Last Mass Center for Shamanic Healing. So welcome, Christina. Hi, thanks, CJ. So since it's a month of love, I wanted to talk to you a little <laughs> bit about um, the indigenous practices of love and uh, how it's different than the Valentine's Day love that we're now <laughs> swarming around. Yeah, well, I think culturally it's hard for us to understand how our romantic idea of heterosexual monogamous love as the ideal, mm -hmm. it dominates everything. And yes. that's not really what indigenous cultures practice. They're not sending Valentine's Day cards. <laughs> no <laughs> Valentine's Day cards. And they practiced something that we would sort of derogatorily called serial monogamy mm -hmm. but really the point was they practiced healthy family units and when a mm -hmm. family unit couldn't be healthy in the community for the children for the sort of the economic viability of that couple it was expected that the grown-ups would have enough sense to make a change hmm. and change was really easy and depending on what on what culture we're talking about, basically one adult stuff was put outside the door. Wow. So if there's so the, so the, <laughs> the main focus is family love, not necessarily right. the wife and the husband or the right. mother and the children. It was right. the whole family as a unit. So let's say as a wife I was having issues, then I would take my stuff and put it out the door. <laughs> no. <laughs> what did you mean? <laughs> well, so it, the main focus is actually the children. Oh. And that's the thing that's really different is the focus of the family mm. unit is the future, which is mm. the children, mm -hmm. period. And, and, and adults, the, the family unit is not anywhere near as important as the community unit. Ah, oh, wow. You know, that's so the kids really are different. Right. Then the community, then these individual families. And in some cultures, you know, the men live with the men and the women live with the women and the children. You know, I mean, it's, there's a lot of different variations, but in principle, the, the, what's similar is that the future matters most, the children matter most. So what's most important is that the environment the children are being raised in supports their healthy development. So they become not only good citizens, but confident people that can bring their uniqueness to the world, which is an important part of having a healthy heart. Mm -hmm. So that's very different. It's so different. We're, we're completely person. opposite. We're yeah. so obsessed with our human love and the love and the romance and being swept away by our husbands and wives and all of this. Where actually um, the Chinese culture is very focused on children and it's mm -hmm. all about children. It's less about community, but it's about children as, uh, and, and I'm not sure how I even became that way, but that's how I was raised. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all about the kids. So when you have that type of culture versus the one that we have where kids are kind of kids are to be silent and not heard or you know those kind of mm -hmm. scenarios what do you think what do you think the outcomes are about love then what how does that contort our sense of love well I think that um what children see modeled then is a very selfish personal love mm -hmm. um and and in in some sense I would use the word immature mm -hmm. I mean it's totally appropriate if you're 14 right <laughs> <laughs> what else are you going to do? But not when you're 24. Right. Certainly not when you're 34. You know, not as you're maturing and aging. That that if you're engaging with your heart in the world, you should be growing up and maturing and realizing that pop songs didn't actually define for you healthy love. You know? <laughs> like hello, <laughs> because pop songs are being written by 19 year olds. Right. Right. You know, who don't don't get it yet and. And so, so what gets modeled then is this very selfish, mm. um, it's, um, very dependent, needy, you meet my needs, I meet your needs kind of love right. where you see in the practices of indigenous people, whether we're talking about Qigong or yogic practices or shamanic practices, what you're seeing is this desire to support the adults in moving into um, a more expansive sense of love that values the community, values ideally all living things. And so mm -hmm. you're wanting to model that for the child so the child grows up with a sense of self, right. which is important in healthy love. I mean, I have to, I have to, I'm the one who has to take care of myself. Right. Right. So right. I have to have that first, but that it's not selfish. 
Right. That I, it's always that, thinking about other people, thinking exactly. about the community, thinking about something broader. So in a right. lot of ways, it's role modeling that other way. Mm-hmm. But how does one move to that direction? You know, because we don't even have role models ourselves because our parents may yeah. not have. I was because my parents had that kind of mentality, but mm-hmm. a lot of people don't. Yeah. Well, it, it seems a little counterintuitive, um, but a lot, of, a lot of shamanic work is sort of paradoxical. But mm-hmm. what I find is it, if we, as these children that have this sort of flawed model presented to us, recognize, okay, bottom line here is mom and dad are never going to actually show us what we need to know. So mm-hmm. let's just let them go. Right. Let them off the hook. You know, right. it's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, and our job is actually to to go within ourselves to the inner life and find out the, you know, the little people within ourselves that hold all those bad ideas mom and dad showed us mm-hmm. and help them and grow them up, basically. But they need mm-hmm. to be loved. They need to be loved by us instead of looking for it out in the world because what people do, since they didn't really get it from their parents... Mm. because their parents were involved in this kind of selfish love so they didn't really get this just open love necessarily from their right. parents they're modeling right. that so there's they, so love is always about getting a depletion i carry filled by somebody else so uh. it's always coming out of debt always coming out of scarcity always coming out of this place which isn't actually true mm-hmm. because the deeper truth for all of us if we would stop reaching out there and turn inward and connect with the bigger energies that are always present for us, the nature of our entire universe is this expansive love. Mm -hmm. There's no shortage. So how does one, and I think that that's right on. So if I think about what is some advice that we can give people who are a little bit blue, because they're still in this notion of someone else has to fulfill me. I need to go find Mr. Right or Mrs. Right or whatever, Mm -hmm. that in some ways going and finding that love within yourself and loving yourself probably is the first part. And knowing <laughs> that that love is inside, mm-hmm. what's a way for us to experience that love on the inside? It's, it's easy to say, right? It's easy mm-hmm. for you and I to say, well, you need to love yourself and find yeah, it on the inside. But like, not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> how do I do that? So what do I do to get yeah. there? How would you, how, because well, you've done, you've done that practice yourself over how many years? Gosh, how yeah. many years have you been doing this? Because this has been your focus area. Yeah. Decades. You know, 30 years. Really. Yeah. yeah. But, but the first teacher was really the first really big adult broken heart. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and the first thing that I learned from that, because we get into this place of, oh, my God, I'm never going to feel that again. It's right. never, the sex is never going to be that good. The, right. This is never, you know, it's like, and it's all about the other person. Right. I'm never going to have this again because that person is gone. Or even if we've never had that person, it's our right. dream for love. And right. I'm never going to have it. I'm that, you know, it's this whole thing of it's never going to happen out there. And the thing that's important to understand about relationships is if you've had it, you take it with you. Mm, it's that's yours. That's a key one, right. Because you, you were there. The experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gone. That person's gone. It's gone. Right. It's you were there. It's yours. Right. It's your value. It's your thing that you participated in. So if that was great sex, you take that great sex with you. And that's the baseline for your next relationship. Mm. And you and you understand those other people don't carry those things. You do. And